Hey, I got the Squire Basics. I got the Squire Basics. Musician's friend, open box, better grab that shit. Grab that Squire Basics. I took it to Moonstone Guitars to get the intonation fixed. I'm a Squire Basics. That's right, I picked up a new Fender Squire Bass 6. Very interesting guitar. It's a uh, stringed like a regular guitar, only an octave down, tuned an octave lower. And uh, it's a fun guitar, you know, kind of like a baritone, but it, uh, you know, rides the line between bass and guitar. Good for tic tac. Kind of stuff and um, anyways they're a great deal they're 350 bucks and these are uh, accurate to how they were made in the 60s and 70s uh, with the pickups individually able to turn off and on each pickup and a throttle kill that lets it sound more guitar like and twangy and uh, but I found an open box for 270 so I thought that was a great deal and I couldn't pass it up but as everybody that owns one of these knows the intonation is crappy and problematic on these it's very hard to uh, get the E intonated because you can't really get the saddle back far enough some people are buying uh, wide bridges that give you a little more space in there some people are putting shims in and anyways, I took this to my good friend, Steve Helgeson at Moonstone Guitars to see what we could do just using all the what comes with it, seeing if we could wrench this thing into decent intonation. And I'm pretty happy. So I loving how it sounds. And here's how it goes. Uh, we wandered a little bit on some of the conversation, but uh, kick back and enjoy the ride at Moonstone Guitars, fixing the Squire basics. Don't have That's why I was asking about the springs, because maybe you can take out the spring to get a little further. Sharp. Okay, I'm doing slow motion. Still hitting that. Oh, because it's riding off of the front of that screw. What I'm going to do is shorten it a little more. Because you know it needs to be there. Take it out and shorten it. Intonating the E string of the Squire Bay 6. What did you do, Steve? I uh, cut off the, the intonation lengthening screw and took out the spring so I could move the saddle, the, the saddle almost all the way back is what it needed. And cut off the... I cut off the end of it the end of it so you could uh, move it back without I had the... to cut off the end because it was sticking up and hitting the string and I also oblonged the hole so this thing could bend up a little more it kind of needs it uh, the hole in this bridge part yeah right that hole I mm -hmm. probably need to make it a little more bigger now so I can get this to raise up so we might be able to have this puppy intonated without buying a new bridge Yeah, it's almost flat now, isn't it? Well, now it's oh, not. Now it's not. <laughs> now that the bridge floated yeah, forward. Yeah, see what happened. Boy. 
That's the way to lock that. But you got to take the strings off yeah. and pull the bridge out. You can use tape. Tape works just as good just to get it tight in that hole so it doesn't move back and forth. Mm -hmm. Then you then you finally intonate it. Otherwise, it's just... Right now, it's all the way forward. So you move it back here. That's all the way back, so it'll go right about the middle. It's right about there. That's just always been a problem with these bridges. Uh -huh. Shim the posts of the bridge to keep it from from traveling back and forth like this. This is just ridiculous. I got one there. Yeah. See these sit in those cups and they just ro rock back and forth. What's the use of adjusting the intonation if you can't keep it locked up? That's what I say. I to have some carbon fiber that might fit that. Carbon. Yes, perfect fit with the carbon fiber. A lot better. Yep. Oh, perfect. This is drive shaft from a helicopter. <laughs> <laughs> Nice carbon fiber. Lock that bridge. I don't really use the whammy anyways. Take, take that slop out. Fiberglass tape. Composite tape. I, w I want it to be tight in there. Yeah. Yeah. Place it in. No more rock. There we go. Rock solid. That's it. That's the only rocking we're doing is rock and roll. Rocking solidly. <laughs> Yeah, I could use a nut cut being cut down. Yeah, the nut cut down and it wouldn't buzz. The only buzz you worry about with the nut is open string. It's the it's the D and the G and the B and the E. Better for. Um what about using some of that so. woolly mammoth tusk you have to make a new nut? Tusk nut. How much would you charge for that? Not right now, but I mean. Um, like the woolly mammoth. Probably 100 bucks. Steve has actual woolly mammoth tusk that he uses for nuts sometimes. Yeah. 100 bucks? That's not bad. I guess That's woolly mammoth is. Yeah. It's not as rare as you think. What are you talking about this? Petrified. Yeah, tell me what that is. That's woolly mammoth. Petrified woolly mammoth tusk. Ivory. You can see the ivory grain. Elephant tusk yeah, has it has a similar grain. You know, that, see the grain in it? You can't use ivory from elephants, but you can use ivory from woolly mammoths because they're already extinct. Yeah. How much did that piece cost? Uh, it's about 600 bucks up in Alaska. Uh-huh. Jeff got it at a, at, a, crazy. at a store, you know, <laughs> on the side of the road, one of the uh -huh. fossil store or whatever, <laughs> a rock shop. Would you say and that... I got my oh, yeah, walrus. Look. This, I cut quite a few nuts out of that. We can get a walrus tusk nut if yep. you like that for Moonstone Guitars. How much would a walrus tusk nut cost? Hundred bucks. Hundred bucks. It's all good. Bone nut, eighty bucks. It's a lot. It's a lot of labor. Yeah. 
cutting a nut. <laughs> I've, already, I've already got some of that stuff milled out right here. This is the last of elephant ivory I had. This was this was legal elephant ivory because when I got it, it was legal. It had been here for 80 years or some shit. I don't know. Mm -hmm. So I've cut uh, almost all the nuts nuts and saddles I can get out of that. Uh -huh. See how it's hollow right there? Yeah, so you can't use the, that part. Well, you can make fender nuts out of the small stuff and a big Martin nut out of, or out of this. This has got nice grain. This is real ivory. What I cut out of that big walrus. Oh, and that's, this, that's some walrus. This is for saddles. Yeah. Uh huh. And the center is the. You don't use the center because it's 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 uneven texture. Yeah. And this color. I'm not sure if it, it's not rotten. It's just it's like stone in the center. That's why I have fake, fake fingernails, strong, strong fingernails to pull these fully tuned strings out of the nut. It tear, yes. It's really hard on your nails. Show me your nails. Steve uses fake nails, super glued on. Yeah, because I'm always, I have it on these, mainly these two is what I grab it with sometimes. This one doesn't bother it. And I used to have them on my lap too. Sometimes, if I break a this big one, I'll put a fake one on. But then you can't. Because I have to grip little. Guitars. I have to grip these little pieces of wood on the big edge sander, you know, and, and so these thumbnails really work as tools. Uh huh. Not a real bluesy thing, is it? Yeah. So how's that intonation? Sounds good. Yeah. New discovery. This one's hitting the screw. Two? Yeah. This this B string. Look. If you look real close, you can see it touching the screw. I can. So, I can. so, it's... so we found two more screw hitting strings. <laughs> We're gonna have to cut off those screws, and that happened. Two more have to be cut off. Did that happen? chunks. I guess I can't return this now to musician's friend. <laughs> if you did you should charge him yeah. for the for the work. Uh, yeah. Plays a lot better up here. Chords better so it yeah. should intonate better. Testing intonation. It's within a point. Mm -hmm. Depends on how you're bending it. Yeah. Let's hear the E. One twenty three, eighty two, eighty two. So that's pretty close. Yeah. Pretty damn close. We're done. Oh, we are done. 
So that's all it took, about an hour's work to fix the base six and uh, cost me about 80 bucks. So really $360 for a supremely intonated base six that plays great. Steve is a master luthier. Um, so I wouldn't just take it to Guitar Center and hope one of those guys can fix it for you. Um, you want somebody that can get in there and do some dirty work to get this rocking the way it should. But I'm very happy with it now. I can't put it down, so I'm really happy. Mm -hmm. 